What's up my fellow Shield Bros, and welcome in. I'm Shield Bro 6 for the History Armada, and I will be your guide today as we talk about one of the most influential and important men of history, Charlemagne, otherwise known as Charles the Great, who was known as the Father of Europe. So we are talking about Charlemagne today because it was on this day that he was crowned King of the Franks and was able to shape the course of history for Europe and the world forever. Charlemagne was a medieval emperor who ruled much of Western Europe from 768 to 814 CE. In 771, Charlemagne became King of the Franks, who had originally been a Germanic tribe in present-day Belgium and France and the Netherlands. He was a skilled military strategist, and he spent much of his reign again engaged in warfare in order to accomplish multiple goals. In 800 CE, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne the Holy Roman Emperor. In his role, he encouraged the Carolinian re Renaissance, and he saw a revival of intellectual and cultural properties within Europe. He died in 814, but he, and because of his efforts, he is known as the Father of Europe. So we're going to talk about Charlemagne, we're going to talk about his crowning, and we're going to talk about some of the important factors of his life during his reign. But it's going to be kind of a condensed version because Charlemagne lived a very long and very influential life, so to cover everything would be, that would honestly have to be a series. So it's going to be kind of a condensed version to give you the overview and the important aspects of what he did. So let us begin with Charlemagne's early life. Charlemagne, often referred as Charles the Great, was born around 742 to Bertrada of Leon, pictured left in her statue, and Pepin the Short, pictured right. And he became King of the France in 751. Pepin, that is. Charlemagne's exact birthplace is unknown, although historians have suggested that Liège, in present-day Belgium and Aachen, is modern-day Germany, is possible location, so either Aachen or perhaps Liège. Similarly, little is known about the actual childhood, such as the education or experiences of his childhood. Although, as an adult, he displayed a talent for multiple languages, and he could speak Latin, Greek, and, of course, Frankish and German. These would all influence what he would go on to do in his life. So after his father Pepin's death in 768, the Frankish kingdom was divided between Charlemagne and his younger brother Carloman which was the tactic at the time, that was tradition. You would usually divide it between your sons rather than your older son inheriting all. That would become a tradition later on. But the brothers had a quite strained relationship and they did not cooperate well. However, Carloman died in 771 on December 4th, leading to the 24-year-old Charlemagne being crowned King of the Franks on December 5th, 771. And this would lead us to Charlemagne's reign as the sole king of the Franks. So Charlemagne expands Christianity throughout his entire reign. And that's one of the most important reasons that Charlemagne was an important ruler, especially for his time period. Once in power, after his crowning in 771, Charlemagne sought to unite all the Germanic peoples into one kingdom and convert his subjects to the religion of Christianity. In order to carry out this mission, however, he had to spend a majority of his reign engaged in military campaigns. Soon after becoming king, he conquered the Lombards, which were a pagan people in northern day, uh, present day northern Italy, the Avars, who are lived in modern day Austria and Hungary, Bavaria, and many others. Charlemagne, however, most notably, waged a long and bloody three decade series of battles and wars against a people known as the Saxons. The Saxons were a Germanic tribe of pagans and had earned a reputation for being ruthless, and they would be part of the Great Migration to Great Britain. However, in 782 at the Massacre of Verdun, Charlemagne reportedly ordered the slaughter of 4,500 Saxons for being pagan. He eventually forced the Saxons to convert to Christianity and declared that anyone who didn't get baptized and follow the Christian traditions was to be put to death on display for all to see. So this long three decade war combined with the forced conversion eventually did pacify the Saxons, but 
It was a long and bloody way to do so, and has earned Charlemagne quite the reputation and earned quite the disdain from the Saxons and the Pagans during their time period. He eventually did also become the first Holy Roman Emperor, and that was very important because the Holy Roman Empire, or at least what was known as the Holy Roman Empire, would last all the way until the time of Napoleon Bonaparte in, I think, what was that, 1810, when he dismantled it. But the point stands, it lasted for about 1,100 years almost. You see, in his role as a zealous defender of Christianity and a man at the head of conversion, Charlemagne gave much money and land to the Christian church, and he often protected the popes, who were the head of the Catholic church. As a way to acknowledge Charlemagne's power and influence and his relationship with God and the church, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne Emperor of the Romans and the first ruler of the vast Holy Roman Empire, as it became known as. And he was crowned Holy Roman Empire on December 25th, 800 CE, so that is also coming up. And he was crowned at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. As Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne proved to be a talented diplomat and able administrator of the vast area that he controlled. He was very good at the top-down rule and administration of his people. He promoted education and encouraged the Carolinian Renaissance, which was a period of renewed emphasis on scholarship, culture, and religion. Charlemagne also instituted economic and religious reforms and was a driving force behind the Carolinian Minuscule, which was a standard form of writing that would later become the basis for modern a European printed alphabet. So it is thanks to him that we saw the rise in the Catholic Church as it was and the unification of these people and the idea of a standardized print and writing. Which brings us to the Carolinian Empire itself. On the left you can see the Carolinian Empire under, name, under Charlemagne's empire at his succession and the territories added before his death. On the right you can see the division of the empire after his death. Charlemagne ruled for a number, from a number of cities and places throughout the Carolinian Empire, but spent significant time in Aachen in modern-day Germany. His palace there included a school for which he recruited the best teachers in the land to educate his court and his people. In addition to learning, Charlemagne was interested in athletic pursuits. He was known to be highly energetic, and he enjoyed hunting, horseback riding, swimming, and dueling. Aachen, Aachen, however you pronounce that in modern day Germany, held particular appeal to him due to its therapeutic warm springs. He was also no stranger to the elegant, elegant indulgence of imperial standards. According to the historian Einhard, quote, On great feast days, Charles made us of embroidered clothes and shoes bedecked with precious stones. His cloak was fastened by gold buckles, and he appeared crowned with a diadem. Of gold and gems end quote so you can hear how within his empire he had such an elegant standing with these elegant clothes as well as athleticism that he used to push his agenda he did bring about quite a few economic and other reforms as I mentioned and you can also see here on the map just what a large swath of land he held especially for such the time period and it is quite impressive how he was able to control and moderate the land during his rule. And that's a reason, I mean, there, there's a reason he is known as Charles the Great. You don't get that title by being, you know, Charles the Mediocre. He was, it, it's fascinating. I actually have a book I'm going to recommend at the end of the uh, video. But I, I've read that book at least three times. And it, his rule and his wars and his religion, his family, it's fascinating. Because this man shaped about a thousand years of European history with his decisions and of course his Carolinian Empire but that does sadly bring us to Charlemagne's death and ultimate secession Einhard again the historian wrote that Charlemagne was good in health until the final four years of his life when he often suffered from fevers and he also acqu acquired a limp at the end of his life however as Einhard the bio biographer notes, quote, Even at this time, he followed his own counsel rather than the advice of the doctors, whom he very nearly hated because they advised him to give up roasted meat, which he loved, 
and to restrict themselves to boiled meat instead, end quote. So even at the end of his life, he was a stubborn and strong man. In 813, Charlemagne crowned his son, Louis the Pious, King of Aquitaine, as co-emperor, as you can see here depict depicted. Louis became sole emperor when Charlemagne died in January 18th. 14 at the age of 72, which again, 72 is quite impressive for the time period. His empire encompassed almost the whole of Western Europe, and Charlemagne was buried at the cathedral in Aachen, and in the ensuing decades, his empire was divided among, amongst his heirs, and by the late 800s, it had been dissolved. Dissolved means to have broken up, to no longer exist. Nevertheless, Charlemagne became a legendary figure endowed with mystical qualities, almost like Arthurian legend. He became almost renowned to the point of King Arthur. You know, it's Charlemagne, it's Charles the Great. He is the converter of pagans, the conqueror of land, the just ruler of men. And he, in 1165, under Emperor Frederick Barbar Barbarossa, Charlemagne was even canonized, for political reasons, however, that the Catholic Church today does not recognize him any longer as a saint, but in 1165, he was! He was renowned all the way up to 1165 that he was canonized as a saint of the Catholic Church, which, like I said, is no longer the case. But the point stands of the impressive hold that Charlemagne held upon Europe. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned a little bit about Charlemagne, Charles the Great. And perhaps you learned a little bit about his rule and how he was crowned King of the Franks on this day. And, of course, I hope you enjoyed if you did enjoy, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button for me and help me get my content out there. If you have any comments, suggestions, concerns, or if you have an idea for a new video, please put that in the comment section down below for me. I do read all of your comments. If you want to support me further, check out the links in the description of the video. But until the next one, as always, I'm Shieldbro6 for the History Armada, and I'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.